Hi everyone, welcome back to Cup of Tea with Rick G. And we've got a really, really special guest with us today. And we've got Nick from LNPG with us, who's going to explain the benefits of his buying group to all of us in this group as landlords. So Nick, welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. This is the first I've ever done one of these. That's fine. We're going to be great. You know, it's going to be nice and informal. <laughs> Nick and I had a bit of a conversation before um, we went live and just talking a little bit about the background and what have you. So what we're going to do, Nick, if it's OK with you, first of all, um, I'm drinking coffee, so it's not really cup of tea with Rick G today. Nick's drinking tea. I so am we, drinking tea. He's, he's with us on that. So Nick, um, what we'll do, we're going to kind of mix this up a little bit today. So can you just explain for the viewers and the listeners what LMPG is, and then what we'll do then, once you've explained what it is, we'll regress and go all the way back to where you started, what your background is, and kind of like a bit of a timeline onto where we are today. Does that sound all right? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Thank okay, you. so what is LMPG? LMPG is, a, is technically a buying group. The councils, central government, all have what they call a framework. So the council can tap into a framework to buy products for their homes. They have around 4 million homes within side frameworks, council, central government. So why didn't the land, why hasn't the landlord market got that kind of scheme? So what I did was back in the early days was go to the manufacturers and say, the landlord market is around three to four million homes. It's now 4.1, I understand. Why can't we have our own framework? Mm. And that's where the problem started okay. for me. Right. Because I am the kind of worms that they wish they probably wouldn't let me in. All right. Let's, well, well, thank you for that. And I'm going to come back to that. Remind me. So we're going to pick on the word problem. Okay. So your background. So you've, you've LMPG effectively now yeah. is a buying group yeah. for private landlords. Yes. Okay, great. And most people, I think, in the group have heard of LMPG. And if they haven't, they will certainly know about it after today's interview. So who's Nick? So take, you know, take the listeners and the viewers back to where did it all start for you? What is your background? I was a builder. I did an apprenticeship in carpentry and joinery. And that was a five-year apprenticeship for me. And then I did that. From, from school to college, and I did it for five, six years, and then I got out of it because I didn't like the cold. Mm. I then became a broker. Okay. And then- For <clears throat> mortgages or? Yeah, for mortgages, yeah. investments, pensions, etc. And I did that for quite a few years. And then back in 2000, early part of 2000, I got back into the building trade. I then started buying homes with several people. And I what, built for yourself, yes, or, yeah. no, for myself, yeah. and we've got we had about thirty homes okay. now, and I was invited to a council meeting, so that's where NMPG started, two thousand and six, thirty first, sorry, the twenty sixth of December, right, okay, no, not twenty sixth, the twenty. This is where the idea was born. Yeah, the twenty third, uh, but. I was buying properties and I was spending an awful lot of money on refurb. So we'd buy a house, refurb it, let it out. Mm. And I would get retail prices and I would get trade prices. And I was at that stage, back in the year 2000, we were technically 100% LHA. So for those of you who don't know, uh, <coughs> Local Housing Association, just so yeah. a few LHA people LHA is people who are on benefits. 99.9% yep. .9 of our tenants were LHA tenants. Okay. And we were in a particular Were you self-managing as well, Nick? Yeah, yeah. we were self-managing. I was doing all the refurbs, yeah, because of my background. Yeah. I'd have the, a painter, electrician, So you plumbers. were absolutely on the tools. Yep. And I would do my own damp proofing. And I... Some days we had, in some months, we had two or three uh, refurbs going at, at one time. And because I got picked up by the council, because we were 100% LHA, what happened was that I was invited to a council meeting. Okay. And this is... Is this a good council meeting or a bad council meeting? Well, I didn't know, because back in 2005, six central government were putting funding away from the councils. Councils needed to get closer to the landlord market and councils don't like the landlords and vice versa because what was happening central government again made legislation changes where tenants would be paid the money yep. and then paid us yep. and if you've got a vulnerable tenant yeah 
we're the last ones to receive Absolutely. our monies and also we're the last ones to find out whether why isn't it in our bank account suddenly it was causing real issues yep. for the land of market so i was invited to a council meeting and i thought it would be balls over district council and mansfield district council i was invited along to have a conversation with them how could we build this bridge that was back in 2000 okay so it wasn't um it wasn't a slap on the hands type of council no, meeting okay no, no okay so it was to how we could bridge the two yeah I walked into this council meeting and think there'd be 20 people. Oh, no. There was over 500 to 700 oh, people. Oh, wow. Okay. 500, like, sort of other landlords? No, councils. Really? Across the country. What, and just you? Yep. Why you? Because I was in a particular area that they were holding the meeting, okay. and I got invited. <laughs> oh, they picked on so me, you I were like, still don't know. like a rabbit in the headlights. And, and you didn't know until you got there? I did not know there. Wow. I walked in, in my suit, yeah. yes, I hadn't put a suit on for many years, and I walked in, and I won't repeat what I thought. <laughs> I bet. And I'm standing there like an idiot. They asked me, how can we get closer to the landlord market? And all I said was, give me your framework. If you allowed landlords to tap into your framework for products, for repairs, that would warm the landlord market to you. To me, that just made pure common sense. So I stood there and I said this, and the room went deadly quiet. And now <laughs> no I, one's ever ever dared ask that question before. No, and no. How dare you? <laughs> and I stood there, and they all looked at me, and they went. And one guy right at the front went, "No, we can't do that." Now, I'm a child, because that didn't make sense to me. So what I said was, why? I wish I'd asked that question. And they all stood there and looked at each other and went, yeah, why? Mm. And this guy at the front said, because we can't. Manufacturers would not allow us to. So I went, thanks very much, put the mic down, and I walked out the door. Really? The guy followed me, and then he said, why didn't you do it yourself? set your own framework up. Who was the guy that followed you? That said I haven't that? got a clue. Don't know. He didn't become your business partner? No, no, no. And I went, on the way home, this thing just stuck with me. It was, it was the 23rd of December, 2006. On the way home, and then I got Christmas, and I'm sitting there with a piece of paper, and I drew out the manufacturers, it was massive, all the manufacturers, with me stuck, the landlords, in the middle. So I thought, what a great idea. So 2007, I went to all the manufacturers. Personally? Personally. I rang them up, got an appointment with them, went along to see them. I was seeing That must MD. have been really hard work. Hard work? Pitching to, who were you pitching to? MDs, National right. Sales Directors. Were they seeing you? B&Qs, Wixies. Yeah. Uh, Juicens. So how did, let's, let's talk about that for a minute then, because I know how hard it is to get in front of MDs. Um, sometimes you can't, it's impossible. Yeah. So you're starting out, you're Nick Watchhorn, yeah. you just had a meeting with the council, and all of a sudden now you're on the phone trying to get meetings with MDs of people like Wixes, etc. Yeah. How did you get in front of them? I just rang them up. And I rang, <laughs> it started with Wixes, was, that we were buying so much products and I was buying Yourselves as yes, your business, yeah. yeah. But we were buying for other landlords as well. Okay. Because I'm doing Because you, so. did you already have a discount with Wix's as yeah. a, an individual? I had, uh, I had technically an office in Wix's. Right. I had my own stack. Was it? shelving. Okay. And I would buy loads of products and just put it in there. All right. And I'd be, I'd, I'd be meeting, I'd have meetings in Wix's in one of their stores in Mansfield. Never. With landlords. Yeah. So, what happened was that we put an idea forward to Wix's and they had just recruited uh, one of the marketing guys from Woolworths. Right, okay. And we was met this with, after Woolworths went down or before? <laughs> I, I don't actually remember. And we sat in a meeting with him and he was so patronising. Mm. And he said, oh, it's nothing to do with price. It's all to do with service and products. And I said, but you don't label your products, you just label Wix's. So he said, yes. 
but we have a good name, a good brand, so we won't be doing discounts. We won't be giving any rebates, and I'll explain rebates in a second. It'll be a flat price for off our shelves, and we'll give them service. Right, so they're saying basically you want it, and you pay what yeah. everybody else pays. But it was so patronising. Eve was really patronising to me. So, and I was really green, so I just soaked it up. But I then went to Juicen's, being q I went to doing the same thing yep yeah asking to set up a framework yep and they all went that's got legs we like that now if you ever hear the word it's got legs from any national sales director from any manufacturer really what he's saying was thanks very much for your time but it's going to go nowhere right it really does mean that right because I went to all of them and was there anybody else, Nick, doing this at the time? No, nobody, nobody. So this was a, <clears throat> an open market. Yep. And there was other frameworks for the councils, but not in but the not private. But not private. Not private. And I thought, why wouldn't they let me in the door? That was my thought. Why wouldn't they let me in the door? Now, I didn't know what the pricing was. I knew absolutely nothing. All I knew was the councils have special pricing yep. and a framework. And it's better than retail and trade. But you didn't know what that was? I didn't know what it was. <clears throat> so I then hounded. I mean, I hounded. I started with the national sales directors, the MDs, and I worked my... Da- I was even talking to the staff in places like Juicens. I went to uh, Baxi, Valent, Ideal. I went to all the manufacturers. You name it, I was there. And they all turned me down. The short thing was, was it basically they just why, why did they turn you down? They just couldn't see a, they a model. Couldn't see, no, they couldn't see that the landlord market was, was big enough. Was big enough, but but also what they didn't want was the pricing they give the councils to be out in the public domain. Now, as this happens, we hit the world recession because two thousand seven, eight, nine. So now. Manufacturers are looking for new markets. Mm. That was what I was looking for, new markets. Now, I'm sitting, I one of the companies I did hound was uh, PTS. Before you move on from that, so you, it's just you at this point. Yep, nobody else. So it's you out on the road hustling. Yep. yep. Yeah? How, and doing the refurbs. And doing the refurbs as well at the same yep. time. But you're out there trying to forge this business. Yep that later became what it is now, hustling. Yeah. How was that mentally for you? I mean, it can't have been easy. Did you ever think, you know what, I'm just not going to do this. I, I, nobody wants it. I'm going to move on. You have to understand me. Once you say no, I need to understand why the answer is no. That's I, a great ethic, you know. And it's, a lot of people would take that and run with it, then, you know, we get loads more of them. Loads if there's more. a logical reason why the answer is no. Yeah, but many people don't know why it's no, do they? Because you mentioned the council before, oh, we can't do that. Well, why can't we do that? Oh, actually, I don't know, because it's what we've always done. Yeah, but I was educated a little bit different to everybody else um, because I have a disability and I was taught at school, don't ever accept no. Um, I'm totally dyslexic. Reading and writing is a, an absolute nightmare for me. So I was educated differently. No was not an option for me. Mm. I have to understand why the word no is there. Yeah. Now, I hope people don't find that. No, not at all. I was just a no, but <laughs> it's, I think it's great. And, you know, there's lots of books out there called Go For No. Yeah. You know, find out. If somebody says no to you, it's not no. Because they probably don't understand why it's no themselves. Yes. You know. And I have to. And we call them, there's a book out at the moment that calls these things Brules bullshit rules because it's what people have always done yeah. and nobody knows why yeah. and then it's up to somebody like you that comes in and breaks that mould to start bringing out new ideas yeah. so anyway I interrupted that I just wanted to so um, we get back to your mindset at this time so you're out there you're hustling you're on your own you're doing this yeah. talk to us a little bit about that you know how, how that felt to you and you say that you know you don't give up because of the no God you're getting really personal yeah. here there were some days I was demoralised yeah. Because I try not to be rude to people, but people were being bluntly rude. Oh, what's he got? No, it's a joke. Can't see it. And even the family. Yes. Your family, your direct family? Yeah, my direct okay. family. What, what do you mean? It cost me in my marriage. Did it? Really? Yeah. Okay. Because 
I don't want to be disrespectful, but you have to kiss ass. Mm. I'm sorry if that's offending. No, you, no, no. Let's get this you real. You have to really get down on your knees, and you have to beg sometimes, right, to them to trust you. Yeah. Because what did I have? Yeah. I had no landlords. I had absolutely nothing. All I had was a concept. Yeah. Was I knew that the contract division market was out there for the councils, which is housing. Why couldn't the landlord market have the same quality products that they have? Yeah. Why can't we have it? Yeah. I, 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 I no, didn't I couldn't understand it. So I mean, I, <laughs> one company I rang every day, every day, and then I stopped. And then they rang me and asked me why, why, I, hadn't rang, <laughs> why I hadn't rang them. You know what? Yeah. A, I spoke about books earlier, and there's a book called uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And he talks a lot about persistence, and this is exactly what you did. It's about never giving up and just keep on knocking, and eventually your voice will be heard. Yeah. Yeah. And that went on for 2008, eight, nine, and 10. So you went out basically knocking doors, in effect, yes. to the big companies for three years. Yeah. Okay, yep. when did the penny four, drop? Four years. Four years. Right. It was actually a bit long there. It's nearly five years. Was it? Yeah, nearly five years. And this was you out there on your own hustling? Yep. Yeah. And I just couldn't get it together. And I was actually... Because people weren't taking you seriously? No. Yeah. And they said he'll never get it off the ground. Right. So I then was doing a refurb in Renneth um, for a lady called Jeanette. And I'm on my knees. I'm putting skirting board up. I've got a drill in my hand, and suddenly these three guys walk in. Now, one I knew, and that's one of the companies that I really hounded. It'd be unfair of me to mention the, that's okay. the company now. Yeah, yeah. And I looked up and I went, what the, do you lot want? Ah, oh, Nick, this concept, this idea you've got. So they came to see you on site? Yeah. I, I, but I said, how did you find where I was? They said, oh, the, we rang the plumber. Yes, because my plumber was in there every day buying products. Okay. Yes. And he said, I rang the plumber. He told me he was there. So we thought we'd come over and see you. So I said, what do you want? And he said, look, a guy called Dean Worrell is going to ring you. Now, how many times do you think that people said, oh, so-and-so is going to ring you to have a discussion about your idea? Mm. That happened mm. probably once a week. Yeah. I went, yeah, I believe that one. So... I could tell you where I was. Now, most people will tell you, who's a little bit older than me, where they were when Kennedy died. I knew when I got this phone call. I was at Trail Service Station getting myself a Costa. This guy, Dean Wall, rings me up and says, I, want, I run the framework for PTS on contract divisions for the council. We have a framework, buying solutions contract. PTS? PTS is uh, part of Travis Putin. Plumber. Right, okay, yeah. And I went, oh, great. Uh, yes, they told me you were going to ring me. He said, um, I understand you've got a monthly meeting. I said, yeah, I've got my first monthly meeting. And he said, where is it? I said, the Derbyshire Hotel. And he said, what time does it start? I said, we'll get there about 6.30. We start at 7 o'clock. He said, okay, I'll be there at 3 o'clock. We can have some lunch. We can talk about your ideas, what you want to do. And he said, because I hear you're a real pain in the ass. <laughs> and I went, I've been called worse. So I get there, I was suited and booted. I turned up at three o'clock, 10 to three. Four o'clock came. About five past four, he rings me and says, Nick, I'm sorry. I thought, oh God, here we go again. He's not gonna turn up. He said, I'm stuck in traffic. I'll be with you in within an hour. So he turns up about half past five, quarter to six. And he sat down, he's a big guy. And he said, I'm Dean Worrell. I said, oh, I'm Nick Watchon, how'd you do? <clears throat> so he asked me three questions. He said, right, how many landlords do you have? I went, none. He said, okay. He said, so you've got no members? I went, not one. He said, okay. How many other partners do you have? I went, none. When he says partners in terms of like um, manufacturers. Manufacturers. Yeah. He went, none. I went, no. Nope. He said, how many landlords have you got coming to your meeting tonight? I went, five. He went, excuse me? 
he said something, I can't remember the exact figure, but he said this contract's worth about 35 million. I said, all I said was, uh, got to start somewhere. Yeah. And he went, and we just talked. And he got up. And my heart sunk. Uh, got about five yards away from me. And he turned to me and said, you coming? I said, where are we going? He said, I've got a presentation to do five landlords. Oh, fantastic. <clears throat> so when he turned away, I went, yes. Yeah. I followed him. I hadn't got a clue what I was doing. Yeah. We walked into this meeting and there was Roger there. There was um, Raj Berry there. Yeah. And a, a, do you know Raj Berry? I do, yeah. Yeah, Raj Berry was Roger there. Roger Beecroft or? No, Roger Lancaster. Okay, yeah, yeah. And there was a few others there. Yeah, yeah. And Dean did a presentation about the pricing. And we all opened our mouths. Like, and this is Dean from PTS? Yes, yeah. Dean Wall. Yeah. And I went, Jesus. So he did a presentation of the pricing? On pricing on boilers, right. radiators. And what, what they could the do. What the pricing they could give us. Oh, okay. And I looked up and I went, wow. And was that significant then? God, yeah. We was were, it? Yeah, major. I mean, there was nearly £300 off the price of a boiler. Wow, yeah. So, <laughs> Raj Berry said, I'll join. I want a boiler. Yeah. And Dean looked at me and said, okay, what's your membership fee? And how we had to come up with a membership fee was to stop the manufacturer, sorry, the trade and retail joining LMPG. Right. And that's why there's a membership fee there. Right. Some manufacturers think our membership fees are too low because they would like to really increase them. And I said, well, I wouldn't pay that. But surely, I mean, you, I mean, I don't know where it comes in. Obviously, this is we, business we had, for you guys yeah, but as well. We had, yeah, but we had no plan. Yeah. So Dean said, there needs to be a membership fee. Yeah. And I looked at everybody and I said, well, what should the membership fee be? And £199 came out. Just came out. Just yeah. came out. Yeah. I don't know who said it, but £199. And, and Raspberry, we went, I'll do it. I'll do it. How do I join? I hadn't got a website. I've got nothing. <laughs> hey, this is the you know this is how the best businesses start. I mean, you really don't understand. We had nothing. Yeah, but you had all the concept. You've been hustling this for five yeah. years. And then, at the kind of that stage, I had two other people with me: a guy called Peter and a guy called Simon. In terms of partnership. Yeah, coming in right. with with me. Okay. And so Mike introduced me to a web designer. Suddenly, within the next, this was the back end of December, back end of sorry, 2010, we launched e, East Midlands. It was called the East Midlands Property Group. Right. And then we changed it to uh, Landlords National Purchasing uh, Property Group. It, we've had to change the name again. Okay. Yeah, because Property Group doesn't tell us what people do in the right. manufacturing. So it's didn't. a purchasing group now. It's a purchasing group. Yeah. Now that took four years for the manufacturers to agree for us to call it purchasing group. Right. Yes. Yeah. So we launched. Cut a long story short, we launched. We had a small website. <clears throat> we had a hundred and ninety nine pound fee. Yeah. So for that fee then, I was sat in that room, for example. We had one supplier. She had one, I was about to say one supplier. One supplier. And what and that supplier, what did they cover like a broad range or was it just very you know, no, limited it, it, ranges? No, it was a whole uh, range of products with inside the plumbing industry. So it's just really for plumbing, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So you got one supplier. Yeah. Then I kind of told a white lie. I went round the industry again and yeah. told everybody that I got Travis Perkins. Okay. And because PTS are owned by Travis Perkins. Right. And people went, hold on here. Is there something to this? Are we missing that? Are the, we? Yeah. Yeah. And slowly, over the next two years, we started to get other manufacturers. So you still had to get out there and still hustle, but you had two other people with you at this yeah. point. Were they out there on the ground as well? Nope, just me. Right. Then I met a guy called Simon Zucci. Yes. Through Raj Berry. Yeah. And Raj said to me, Nick, you need to be at Nottingham because Simon's going to be there. And I was doing a refurb and I just knocked a chimney breast down. I was covered head to toe in dust, soot. I was caked in it. Yeah. And I thought, I'm not going to go. You and mean I, at, at one of his meetings? Yeah, you mean? one of his yeah, meetings, yeah, his yeah. pin meetings. Yeah. But Raspberry said, be at Nottingham on this day. Yeah. Because Simon's going to be there, I'm going to introduce you. 
because what you've got there could be really valuable for the landlord market. So I drove past the turn in, I went, turned round and went. Now I've got my suit in the car, white shirt, yeah, and I'm caked in it. Yeah. So I went into the disabled toilet, I took my clothes off and I had a wash in the <laughs> toilet. I mean, don't forget, financially, it was hard going. Yeah, I, I bet. I was doing the refurbing. Yeah. 50% of my stuff time was on refurbing, 50% of, and all my money was being spent on taking people out for something to eat, right. sitting down with them, yeah. traveling costs. and Schmoozing all the directors. Yeah, that didn't go down too well. <laughs> and so I put my shirt on, I'd done it up with a tie, but all down there was filthy. <laughs> the only bits, bits of plasterboard. Yeah, the only bit that was clean, yeah, <laughs> was this cake. part and my hands. From there upwards, I was I it. caked in it. Yeah. So I stood up at, you know, the inside Simon Zucci's uh, pin meetings, there's, you get an opportunity for 30 seconds. Yep. If you've got something to say, you can say it. Yep. So I said, if anybody wants a boiler at this price, yep, come and see me because we've got the contract for Baxi. Yep. Um, it was just Baxi then, was it? Yep. Yeah, it was just yep. Baxi at that particular moment. Yep. And then Simon came up and said, I've heard about you. And I went, yeah. And he says, I said, can we go outside? Because it was too noisy in the meeting. So we went out and we were talking and Raj Berry came up and said, I've done my due diligence on it. it what he's saying is really true because I've just bought several boilers. So I said, put a presentation together. And he said, you go around all my pin meetings and do a presentation. I said, because I'm not allowed to do any advertising at all. Yeah. The manufacturers will not allow me to advertise. Why is that, Nick? Because of the pricing. Right. If I could buy a boiler cheaper than most people, yeah. Yeah. And from trade or retail, they don't want my pricing out in the public yeah. domain. Yeah. So I went to York Pin yep. to do my first presentation, and Simon turned up. And I'm so nervous. I've never done a presentation in my life. And I've put the presentation together and I did it and I thought it went really well so I said to Simon what did you think he said be at my office tomorrow or the next day we need to get you off the ceiling I said why he said it was all over the place <laughs> it was absolutely <laughs> shocking oh dear and I went was it that bad I went. <laughs> so I came in he gave me some structure yeah he said put it together and I went back and showed him what I'd done. He said, no, that'd be quite good. And then I did the 20 minutes and I went right around the country. Yeah. I was getting, don't forget, I'm still earning no money. I then was doing my refurbs, going to a meeting, getting home at three o'clock in the morning, getting up for nine o'clock or eight o'clock or seven o'clock or going straight to my refurb jobs yeah. while I was doing the presentation. And it's hard work, isn't it, travelling the country? Did you stay over or no, did you travel back? I couldn't afford to stay yeah, over. Yeah, it's hard and work. And I really couldn't afford to stay over. Yeah. A couple of times I sat And sometimes in you, you might go to a meeting and there's a handful of people perhaps in there as well. And you think, oh, you know, it's taken me three hours to get there. Yeah, and I, I slept in the car a few times. Yeah. I, I mean, we... I know where you're coming from. Yeah, we were in the world recession at yeah. that particular moment. And... No, it was really hard. And I mean, I went everywhere. I went down to Brighton, Bournemouth, Cardiff. Yeah. I went everywhere. But you did what had to be done. Yeah. I didn't see any of my family. And that's where we drifted right. apart. And yeah. I really am sorry for that. But that was just the way it went. Yeah. And that really hurt me as well. I'm sure. Yeah, that really hurt me yeah. as well. So it, it, was, it was hard. And... We start getting members from the network in the UD yeah. and the presentation. Yeah, and then suddenly we're spending between fifteen and fifty thousand. And I went, "We're the only one really main supplier." Then we got the paint. We used to have Dulux. Dulux really wasn't interested in the landlord market. I mean, I never forget what they said to me. We've spent millions trying to get into the landlord market. What's so special about you? Mm. And I went, and I went, nothing. Mm. I just work hard. Yeah. So we then got uh, Johnson's, and that's gone right. really, really well. But 
that's the kind of patronising yeah, yeah. kind of conversation. That drives you sometimes, though, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it drives. Yeah. I walk out of meetings going, right, I'll prove you wrong. Yeah. And it just grew. It just, honestly, it just grew. It started to balloon from there. Yeah. And then, but the other thing was, the people around me was, they wanted the reward, but weren't prepared to put the effort in. How do you mean? You mean your partners? Partners. Okay, yeah. And my mentor said, Nick, you've got people around you that's just not going to, I said, I understand, leave yeah. it with me. So I had a chat with every one of them. That's quite what, common, Nick, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah. People along for the ride. Sometimes. But one of them I was really close to, really close to. And I was doing, I'd done Monday, Tuesday presentations, done a Wednesday, and he was supposed to do the one on Thursday. He said, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going on holiday. Right. So I rang him Thursday night, he was down at the gym. Right. So I had to go and do it. Mm. Now I've got people around me are not prepared to put the effort in that I'm mm. putting in. Yeah. So we all part of company. And I said, look, that's just not gonna work. I put a new team around me, which are the same team as today. Good. Yeah, five years later. Yeah. And it's grown now from, at that stage, it was about 150 members. Yep. It's now just over 3,500 members. So you've got 3,500 members now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. So um, let's talk about, so you've gone through all the whole story and the hustle. And I think loads of people watching this will get that. Because no matter what business that you're building, you know, and if you're on the tools, you've got to start I find this somewhere. difficult. Yeah, because <laughs> in my own aim, I wanted like... 1500 members. I thought yeah. if I get to 1500 members, I'd really be. And I, I don't want to come over that I'm gloating. No, it, not it, at all. This is awesome. That's not you know, what LMPG is about. But this is about, this is true. It's about you. I find it difficult talking about myself. Well, no, and you shouldn't, you know, because you've achieved so much. And, um, you know, there's loads of people out there that will resonate with your story because I know myself, you know, when you're out there building a business and you've got to forge it, you've got to start from the ground, you've got to be on the tools, and it is only really just you. And, you know, you're inspirational enough to, you didn't take, you took all the knocks, you kept on running, and, and in fact, it actually motivated you to keep pushing and go further because, you know, loads of people would have given up way before, you know, having been in that room where the people turned up and said, look, you know, we've got a meeting, come and join us, and, and then starting your business, you know, from, from yeah. where it was. Loads of people would have given up, Nick. They would have just said, you know what, I'm going to go back to being a landlord. I know what I'm doing. It's easy. It's the path of least resistance. There's about four companies that have tried to copy LMPG. Since? Yeah, and all, uh, I think most of them have given up now. Yeah, good. Because, because. you I mean, in terms of persistence, I mean, you've got it haven't you, you know, because you've proven that to yourself. I know you don't like talking about yourself, but sometimes you've got to give yourself a pat on the back because you've achieved this on your own. So let's go back. So you've gone through the whole story of um, where you came from and how you got what is LMPG now, yeah. today. So let's talk about where we are right now. So in terms of LMPG now, so the benefits for members. Yeah. So if you want to buy things cheaper to go into your properties and to develop your properties, then this is the buying group that allows you to do that. Yeah, you've got really two two arms to LMPG, and hopefully there'll be a third soon, is you've got the contract division. Yeah. And that's like for kitchens, right. boilers, yeah. paint. Juicens have come, have come on board, and we've now got to go back to the manufacturers to get extra contract support okay. to bring the price further down. Yeah. Then you've got companies like the smaller companies that like who don't get contract division, but we get a discount off of their pricing. 80% of it is contract division, like curries. There's no such thing as contract division f with curries. Yeah, okay. that's just a straight discount off that product line. Right. Okay. And if you haven't seen Nick's face on the posters, yes, in curries, yes, oh, them, and they're into don't. curries and they're like. That's Nick. <laughs> oh, don't, please. I didn't die. You're the Bill Boy poster yeah. now. The poster yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> so you've seen him yourself? Yeah, yeah I have. Like, he died. Yeah. yeah, he's got LMPG in, the, yeah. in 20 of their stores. Yeah. And so the contract division is about getting pricing from central government pricing points. Right. Now, I can't talk about Pacific pricing, yeah. but what I can assure people is that Let's talk about Magnet, because that's probably our biggest company. So Magnet, are they, are they uh, kitchens? Yeah, kitchens. And, yeah. Magnet kitchens. Yeah. 
But also, LMPG wasn't just about pricing. It was about putting quality products in that are going to last. Fit for purpose, I call it. Yeah. Was that, yes, you can go and buy cheap kitchens. Flat pack. Yeah. They will last you two minutes, a couple of years. Yeah. So we went to Magnet and we we did go to Howden's. We, our first contract was with Howden's. We terminated that and then we switched to Magnet. And Magnet and Ridge Carcass, they've got, under the contract division, they've got seven bandings. It's now been reduced to six bandings, but you have certain kitchens in band one, which is the cheap ones. Okay. Then you have band two, band three, band four, band five, band six. Yep. Our pricing between band one and band two, the price difference is about £70 on average kif- kitchen. Mm-hmm. But the quality of kitchen in band two, which is the Luna and Nova, is phenomenal. Right. Yeah, it's an MDF board. A lot of these flat packs are what we call chipboard doors. Not yeah. every one of them is, but yeah. they're chipboard doors. And if a chipboard door gets damp or wet and it's got a real flimsy edging, that comes away, the door blows. Mm. With an MDF door, yeah, it's more wrapped, it's more solid, yes, and it can take some more knocks than maybe the chipboard doors. Yeah. <clears throat> so you have a better product in. Now, if you have better products in and it looks a wow factor, you're gonna find it easier to rent your yeah, properties out. But also, it's gonna last. Yeah. So your overall maintenance cost goes down. Yeah. Because the last thing you want to do is spend twenty thousand pounds on a refurb, yeah. And then all of a sudden, two, three years down the line, you're gonna redo do it. it again. Because it's you not know, the material. I remember cost. when we, we bought a kitchen through <coughs> Magnet, um, for you guys. I can't remember now how long ago it was. But we spoke to the guys behind the counter and the words were we, nobody can match the pricing that we get with LMPG. No. They said nobody. You'll never buy a kitchen cheaper. Yeah. For magnet than in a PG. Yeah. And and again, the people behind magnet. Yeah, because and you, what I'm going to try to explain now is how the contract with magnet works. Yeah. Is that you can ma- imagine a trade count has worked with the trade for all his life. Suddenly he's got a landlord coming with this LMPG card, and suddenly he sees the pricing. You can hold on here. Yeah. I can see more better pricing than I can give anybody else. And it is a real big difference. Mm, mm. You are talking between the other manufacturers, kitchen manufacturers, we are gonna be around anywhere between, it all depends how big the kitchen is. I mean, I've just done a kitchen myself, it's 1,900 pound. I got quotes from other companies, it was over 3,000 pound. Yeah, the kitchen we bought was about just over two grand. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. that would cost you probably around four. lovely kitchen, yeah. So that went in big our, our holiday home, that did, yeah. It's a big, big saving Huge. in that. And again, sometimes they go, why is LMPG getting these, with these rates? Yeah. Yeah. So Magnet have worked really hard educating their branch staff. Yes, because they think, well, I want to sell it at that price, not that price. Our pricing is fixed from January the 1st to December the 31st. Yeah. So... We've just had a small, very small Regardless price. of what offers are installed. Yeah. Our prices are fixed. Our pricing is cheaper than their sale price. Yeah. Yes, by a big way. Yeah. So Magnet really have engaged with the landlord market. They have just done a training video for all their staff on LMPG. Wow. We're now their biggest UK customer. It's amazing. How does that make you feel? Oh, I'm really proud of that one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you should be. Because I know that tenants are benefiting from it. Yeah. 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 Everyone is, aren't they? Tenants, landlords, everybody. Yeah. You know, and it's all about, you know, the standard, the quality that comes in, you know, really high, yeah. and of course the cost. So when you, you got the first company on board, how long did it take you to get the second company on board? So the second manufacturer? <sighs> Probably a month. A month. And then it just started to roll. It started. Because then, had you, some then you can say then we've yeah. got yeah. X and X. But I still go through the same, I, on the way here, I won't mention the manufacturer. They said, Nick, I don't know. Because we don't want to upset the trade. Mm. Yep. Sometimes Uh, you've got to break the mould, though, haven't you? You've got to do it. And I went, after a two-hour meeting? Yeah. Yeah. I said, well, why are you still talking to me? Because we'd quite like to get on board because 
we've seen other manufacturers, how much their business they're doing. Mm. I mean, let me jump forward. Yeah, yeah. Last year, sorry, 2017, we spent 10 million, 10.1. Yeah. This year, last year, 2018, we've done 12.9 That's massive, isn't million. it? Yeah, it's massive. So how many manufacturers does LMPG work with now then? Do you know? No. Is it that many? There is. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's great, isn't it? If you there don't is, know, then it's... No, there's so many. Yeah. Because we have, like, if you talk to Plum Centre. Yeah. Inside Plum Centre, we've probably got 30 different manufacturers just right. within, okay. Plum, okay. within Plum Centre. Walsley, yeah. sorry, Walsley Group. Yeah. Yeah, they, they've changed, changed their name. Yeah. yeah, they've changed. They'd hate me saying uh, <laughs> Plum Centre. It's Walsley. And um, so next week, I'm with AD at their factory. Mm they're going to put a whole product range together for us. So is it true to say then that any of your members could basically now source anything that they wanted to refurb a, a Not whole project? Not on contract as of right now. Okay. I would say 80% of your products that you'll need, yeah. yes, yeah. you could source. And it's going to be the big items, isn't it? Your boilers? Boilers, yeah. radiators, yeah. Yep. Uh, your valves, kitchens. Yep. your kitchens, your paint. Yeah. Yep. Can you get um, mega flow systems, that type of... Yeah, you know? we can do yep. all types of boilers now. Right. The electric boilers we don't have a contract for. Yeah. Because we've been asked three times in the last two years, I can't get contract division on three boilers. So we're talking about boilers. Then. So how does one of your customers... So if I... So I, I'm a member. Yep. I am a member. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so I'm a member of LMPG and I need to get a boiler. I can't physically go and buy that boiler because I'll need to be gas registered. Yes, you can. Okay. No, you can buy that boiler. As a member of LMPG, you open a cash account with Walsley. Right. You have two options. You can walk into branch, you show your account number, because what happens is you have the LMPG account, and that's called the, the master account. Yeah. And then within 24 hours of you opening that account, that then pricing matrix will fall onto your account. Right. Okay? Yeah. We have what we call about a thousand products now under contract. Yeah. Yes different product lines. And I can still go and pick it up even though I'm not a gas yes, registered? Yes, yes. You can do it two ways. You go into branch, you ring the key accounts team. Yep, ask for a quote. Yeah. And that will have the terms on it because they know what terms we've got. Yeah. So if you wanted a Worcester Boss boiler or a Baxi boiler, you, that's what you put in, you get the quote. If you say yes, they'll raise a ticket at that branch mm -hmm. from the key accounts team because it's a, just a phone service you yep. can ring and you can go and pick up the next day. Oh, fantastic, okay. Or you can walk straight into and branch. And you're seeing massive discounts on boilers, Nick, at the moment, man. Yeah, really good ones. You know, and it's not cheap, is it? We did 1,600 boilers last month, did last you? year. Right, and are they still covered under the same warranty? Yep. We get a five-year warranty on all our boilers. Right. Yep. So would the we stand... have to come back to you first, or? No, there's a form on the website. Yeah, you fill it out, and it will tell you where to send it, yep. whether it's a Baxi or Worcester. Or, okay. or, or, or ideal. So what are the big items then? Um, carpets, do you still do flooring and stuff? Yes, we do. Yeah. We do do that. I'm talking to some manufacturers of carpet now because our volumes are there. Manufacturers have actually contacted me and said, can we come and talk to you? So we use a company and again, but the manufacturers have come directly to us yeah. and we're in discussion with them at the moment. Windows? Windows. There's not a company, yes, that does contract division. And what I mean to support the landlord market. Right. Contract division window companies, yes, they will do a run of windows of, say, 2,000 windows. Mm. That's going to take several weeks to do. You might want to set a windows one window. Yeah. They're not going to break that chain, so you could end up waiting weeks for windows. So what we've had to do is go to individual companies, talk to them, on a level of discount that I'm happy with. Okay. And we're working up the country. We've got Kent, we've got yep. South Coast, we've got uh, the Mansfield area, okay? We've just taken on a new one in Luton. Um, we've got Worcester, we've got this area by yep. Worcester Trade yep. Windows. So we're working up the country, okay. yes. And we're gonna probably have another six or seven different window companies by the end of this year. Sounds awesome. So as a customer, how does the whole process work? Because I understand that do we, as a customer, have to go and buy the product? Yes. So we can't send our builder? No. Why is that? Because of the pricing. Because of the trade. pricing. Because they don't want the builders to know what the pricing is. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. So th that's, it. that's the only sort of bit that you'd have to get involved with then, really. Yes. So, so I joined. So I log on to LMPG's website. Yep. 
And can I join on the website? Yes, you can join. How do I prove I'm a landlord? Right, two things. Is you join NMPG. So you go to NMPG or you ring our office. Yep. You then fill out the form on the website. Yeah, and what's, what's on that form? The form's name and address. Just and basic details. And there's, yeah, and there's security questions about you being a landlord. Okay. Yeah, and they've been worded because we'll trip you up when you join. If you're not a landlord. If you're not a landlord. Yeah. Yes. Then you go to page two, it asks you how many properties you've got. And then you have to disclose all your properties. So you have to upload them. When you say upload them, what do you mean? It means you have to upload them to our website. Upload them, what do you mean, the title deeds? Or? No, just the, the addresses. Oh, okay. Just right. the addresses. Yeah. When you go into Magnet, Magnet will go onto the, the, our back office yep. and check it's one of your properties. Okay. Okay. Right. If you've couldn't, it, couldn't a tradesman do the same thing though? Couldn't a tradesman sort of blag it and say, yes, I've got these properties and like, do the same thing? If a tradesman goes into Magnet, he's already probably got a trade account. Yeah, they're going to know him. They're going to know him. Yeah. Or they're going to or know her, of him. Of course. Yes? Yeah. The other thing is when you upload the properties, we do spot checks who owns that property. Okay. Okay? Yeah. The other thing that will happen is you get a phone call three if you've joined online yourself you get a phone call within three weeks of you being a member of lmpg and there's certain questions that the staff are like a security ask yeah. check yeah. to make sure has it ever happened yeah does it happen a lot no no um last year it happened 12 times okay that's okay over the period yep. and how many members would you say you put on last year uh well New and renewing was three and a half thousand. So it's, it's a drop in the ocean there, really. But you know, people yeah. are always going to try it, aren't yeah. they? We did have a situation, and again, it was my mistake. Um, somebody bluntly lied to me, and I believed the guy, and he got away with several hundred boilers. Really? Wow. Yeah. Gosh, it's a lot of boilers. Yes. And there's, uh, I suppose, is there any kind of um, penalty had, for you? No, there was a a, because the manufacturer stood, and it was Worcester. Right. They stood Bosch. by us. Yeah, Worcester Bosch. Boilers. They stood by us, and that I rang the MD and said, National Service Director, Paul Soper. And I said, This happened. And he went, Okay, let's make sure this doesn't happen again, Nick. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And he said, What security levels are you putting in? Now, we've yeah. put several security levels in, but also what we've done is changed our terms and conditions. I suppose, really, you could have pursued them for no, criminal we activity. Do, no? I, if you tell me that. You're an honest guy and you work, mm. yes, and I'm going to believe you. Yeah, but it's still fraud. Right. However, our terms and conditions didn't lay out what, if you did it. Okay. It says you couldn't do it, right. but it didn't tell you what would happen to you. Okay. What we've done now in our terms and conditions, if you buy a product, isn't for your one of your houses and you give it to friends, family, yep. or you're reselling any product... It states in our terms and conditions, we're going to come up back to you and say, well, that's what you paid. That's what the trade price is. Give us a difference. you now got to pay us that yeah. rebate. You've got to do it, haven't you? Because people are always going it's to try It's about the rebate yeah. that the manufacturers are giving you. Well, you're potentially work. going to lose that manufacturer. Yes. If it continues. Yeah. It's the contract support we get from the, directly yeah. from the manufacturer. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be asking back. Okay, so um, so as a customer then, so they log onto your website, fill out all the information they need. Yeah. Now, people that have got rent-to-rent -rent portfolios, are you familiar with rent-to-rent? Yeah, to rent? Uh, rent to rent how, how can they prove that they, because they won't own those. No, they so won't. how can they prove to you as a company well, that they're managing them? What happens is they ring us yeah. and say, I've got several rent-to-rents. There's a document, yes, they would have to say it's a rent-to-rent. -rent. Yeah, like a contract that with yes. them and the landlord. Yes. They You're happy eat. to take yes, that? Yes, we'd be happy to take that. And again, sometimes I know the people. Yeah. And I've said, I don't need the contract. Sure. Yes, because we know them. And is yeah. there a minimum amount of properties people need now? No. Whether you've got one property or you've got 500 properties. And you still yeah. get the same level of discount. That was really important for me. It was to protect the smaller landlords. Yeah. Yeah. The people who've got one, two, three, four, five properties. Yeah. Okay. And again, because there's hundreds of thousands of those people. So pull them together. Yeah, that's what we've been trying. More to so do. than the big, big absolutely. Landlords. And you know, I mean, I don't know if you know this. So would you have an example of an average saving or, or over a year from people that use your company? No. Okay. Because industry are not geared up for us. Yeah. Yes, because they've never done this before. 
we're trying to open accounts with a manufacturer at the moment, yes? So to everybody to have an individual account. Yeah. We've been waiting a year. Okay. Yeah, because their systems aren't geared aren't up ready for that. For it. No. And what's the membership fees? The membership, can I come back to, yeah, to yeah, finish yeah. that question? Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. But if you are got one property, yeah. and this is to protect the landlord, if you've got one property or two properties, and you pay your 199, so it's one to three is 199 pound. Okay. Four to 25 yep. is 299. Okay. Plus VAT. Sure. And then 25, 26 and above is 399. Right. Now, if you've got one or two properties and you pay your membership and you don't actually use your membership, you don't buy a boiler, you don't buy a kitchen, you don't buy loads of paint. And let's say that you bought a couple of cans of paint, you've saved 50 pound. Yeah. That membership has not been worth your membership. Would you agree sure. with me? Yeah, yeah. Well, it has. But neither is my gym membership. Hold on. What we do is we roll you over free of charge. How long for? Another year. Okay. So, so in, this is a yearly fee? This is a yearly yeah. fee. And what happens is that if you don't save your at least your membership in any given year, your membership's rolled over. For a maximum of 12 months? Nope. We've got uh, we've got several members that have just rolled keep out, rolling over. We've rolled it over. Okay. Yeah. And the other great thing is because it's on direct debit. You must have a great team of people in the office working out who's been using what. No, because what happens is we'll ring you. Yeah. And you'll re always ring us back because we say your renewal's coming up. Yeah. Yes, you're on direct debit. Yeah. Don't forget if you haven't used it, get us get in contact with right. us. Once you you ring us and you say to oh I haven't used it I've only bought a couple of cans of paint. We, st we stop the direct debit, we put it on hold, we check with the manufacturers. Now, nine out of 10 times, people have- I'm honest. honest. We've had a few. That are yeah. That have brought two, three kitchens, a couple of boilers, <laughs> two boilers yeah, and said, so, yeah, yeah. I didn't they, use they, it. And they want to save, what, 200 quid? And I ring them up, I ring them up and go, are you in love with me? Yeah. And they go, oh Nick, sorry man, forgot. I, I forgot. <laughs> And I went, it was only like three months ago. Yeah, you forgot buying three boilers and two yeah. Yeah, yeah, And they go, okay, point taken. Yeah. Now, we all make mistakes. It's nice you've still got that personal touch as well with the customers. You know, you're, you're making the calls too. Yeah, I well. do, I do yeah. make. We have a great team behind us. Yes, we have seven people in my office and their whole job is to look after LMPG members. Yeah. Because you're walking into manufacturers, sorry, uh, trade counters, and that can be quite daunting as well. I, even sometimes I feel intimidated yeah. when I walk in. So if I if I join it myself personally, if I join, I am joining. I'm just saying this hypothetically. And I gave the card to let's say George. Yeah. George is behind uh, the camera, folks. So saying, hi, George. Um, can he use it on my behalf? Could he buy it on my no. behalf? It's got to be the person that you've you're... got to purchase it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And the reason that is, it's it takes because of what you can give your card control. To. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We used to be able to give two membership cards out. Right. Yep. And we've done this where people have rang up and said, oh, I want my wife to have one or I want my husband to have one. And they're just lending it to their friends. They're lending it to their friends. Yeah. So the manufacturers, a member got caught doing yeah. this, give it to a sister. Right. Manufacturer said, one membership card now. That's yeah. it. We're governed really quite yeah. high. Yeah, and I think you, should, you ought to be. It. Yes. Because they've given you the opportunity to give us the opportunity. And if someone you know, takes that away, if you lose that manufacturer. It's a privilege. Absolutely. It's not a right that we yeah. have this pricing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, the, like to talk about paint, if you don't mind, yeah, sure. is that Johnson's have really come to the table with us, giving us some excellent pricing. Now, people say to me, oh, I can buy that paint cheaper. Yes, you probably can, but you're not buying Johnson's. Mm. You're buying a cheaper brand. An own brand. An own brand. Yeah. Yes, paint isn't paint. Yeah. Paint is what quality? There is reasons why paint is ten pound for ten liters. I don't know much about paint, if I'm honest with you. Oh. Apart from, don't do magnolia apparently anymore because it's not trendy. <laughs> so, yeah. It's about quality. Um, so we've run through the membership. They go on your website, they pay, they declare how many houses they've got. How long does it take for them to get the card through? It takes about seven days. It can be quicker. Yeah. We we say fourteen days, but we normally get the card. I know they're seven. ready to go as soon as you've got that card. You're ready to you're go. You're ready. However, so, yep. you are ready to go as soon as you join. Okay. Because if you need a boiler, yep. we'll ring us, we'll make the phone call for you to say you are a member, yeah, because they normally know what boiler they want, bang. And do you see many people joining now because they need a boiler now, rather yeah. than joining now because I might need one in the future? Yeah. Does that happen a lot? Yeah. And, and that's okay with you guys? You're it right. it yep. is. I mean, 
and then our backs against the wall. If yeah. we got six or seven people, it takes that one person out for the day. Yeah. Yeah. Now I always say to people, we protect you that you don't waste your money. Yep. From a point of view that you won't lose your membership. Yeah. Yep. It's because if you don't save, we roll you over. Yeah. And I put it in place because would I keep renewing? No, I wouldn't. If you're not using it. If I'm not using it. Yeah. So I put that in place because I'm a landlord. Yeah. It's to protect the smaller landlords. I need to check my membership, man. I'm just keep saying I'm a member, I'm a member. I'm sure we are. I don't deal with that. He's not. I'm not. <laughs> He's checked. No, I haven't. I, have I didn't know that. I, didn't, I don't know whether you are or not. I don't know either. One of the, one of the things is, I call it a no-brainer. Yeah. You will save money. Also, what we're bringing in, we've just brought free legals in. Okay. So if you've got a problem with your tenant or you've got a free, mm. you've got a question you want to ask a legal expert on something to do with landlording, yeah. we now run a free legal helpline. Oh, that's good. Yep. That's a nice one. Also, what I want to bring in is tenancy agreement. So it becomes a one-stop shop. Yeah. Yep. So you've got all the legal forms. And you, will you get that as part of your membership? You will get that as part of your membership Fantastic. as well. Fantastic. That's good. That's yeah. a really good service. We're actually talking to two firms of solicitors to put all them details together. Now, I don't understand why it can't be done tomorrow. Yeah, well... Because they've got other jobs to do, I guess, I suppose. Yeah. I don't know. So, That's going to be awesome. Is that the future for LMPG yeah. then? To providing a one-stop shop? Yes. All free things legal. landlords. Yeah, to do with landlords. And we're growing. Yeah. Yes. And again, we make mistakes, but we go, okay, that didn't work. We'll change this and we'll do this. Yeah. It's about us growing. The whole of LMPG is to support the landlord market. It's fantastic. Nick, can you name your, your, not your suppliers, but your manufacturers? Are you allowed to do that? Yeah, of course not. So we've got... Go on, let's do we've it. Got, Magnet, we've got Johnson's, we've so got Magnet Worcester. Kitchens, Johnson Paint. Paint. Boilers is Baxi, yeah. great, great boiler. Yeah. Worcester Bosch yeah. is the number one boiler. Just around the road. Yes, yeah. I am in Worcester, aren't I? Yeah. Oh God. Absolutely. Yeah, don't show that to them. If you're going to, if you're going to a house in Worcester that doesn't have a Worcester Junior then. We've got radiators, style reds, yeah. yes. Oh God, now you put me right on this spot. Plumbing, uh, plumbing. We've got plumbing, which is Walsley. Walsley. Yeah, Walsley. Yeah. We've got Le electrical. Yeah. We've got... Um, go carpets? On. Yes, we've got carpets. We've got uh, window companies. Yeah. Um, um, is there uh, anything else? I don't know. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I've got lots. Electrical? Uh, electrical, yes, is Le electrical. Yeah, done that. Plumbing, uh, we've done that. What else is there? I, I should have come with a great man. So when, when um, you're... Oh, Juicens. 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 Oh, Juicens. Juicens. Of course, now, yeah. Juicens. Have you still got Travis Perkins? N no, we don't have Travis Perkins. Oh, bathroom.com. How could I forget bathroom.com? Yeah. We're one of the biggest suppliers now. Right. We did £600,000 on bathroom suite with an average cost of £500. Wow, that's good. Yeah? yeah. How could I forget bathroom.com? Yeah. I've got a meeting with them next week. <laughs> um, yeah, so... We've got lots of new manufacturers coming. Now, we've just got Juicens. Yeah. I would say on their pricing, 50% is really good. Yeah. 50% is a typical trade price. Wow. Now, we've had to do what we go back six, seven years and do what we've done with Walsley. We've got to now go directly to back to the manufacturers, mm. like plasterboard, fire doors, yeah, insulation board we need to get extra contract support to bring that price down. Right. So we, we that will then become a true contract division yeah. pricing matrix. Juicens are working really hard with us at the moment. Good. Oh, and we are... So you, get, you, you've got a one-stop shop for everybody. Yes. You, know, you can get everything that you need for your refurbishment. Do you provide the details of um, the manufacturers that people can use when they, yes. when they oh, subscribe? Yeah. Is that all on your website? Yeah, it's all on my website. There's loads. Fantastic. There is, and more and more are coming. And, and again, I'm really proud to be the MD of LMPG. Really you proud. You ought to be. Because it's people like you are recognising that LMPG is becoming quite a force within the marketplace. Yeah, and you're helping landlords, and it's all about helping. You know, you help people solve a problem, yeah. you get paid. You know, and that's yeah. the nature of the, the world, isn't yeah. it, really? So, Nick... I could talk to you all day. You're a really interesting guy. I and hope this goes over really well. I think it's fantastic because, you know, people like to know the backstory behind anybody. Yeah. And yours is very similar to, you know, all of the big entrepreneurs start this way. You talk, I don't know if you watch any movies or, you know, have you seen, have you seen the, is it Ray Kroc from McDonald's? 
you know, I can see a lot of, because he's out there, he's hustling, he's selling milkshake making machines, he's knocking on the door, yeah. he's doing it, he's getting knocked back. But it starts to gain momentum and starts to grow. And you've got now something that I think is going to be, or certainly is, very big now, but is still going to be around in 15, 20 years' time. The LMPG was geared up for that. Yeah. LMPG will exist after I've looked. Absolutely. Dead. You know, and it's yes. fantastic you've done that. Thank you for sharing that with us today. So, folks, if you need to contact Nick, first of all, um, tag Nick in the comments below. Secondly, um, I don't know if it will be Nick directly, but if you go into, is it lmpg.co.uk? Yeah, it's yeah. lmpg.co.uk. Yeah, so, LN, so Lima November, papagolf.co.uk, LNPG. And if you're interested in any of the services, now I do have to say here, folks, I do not get paid for this. I'm not on any affiliate commission or any kickbacks or anything. This is just to provide value for you and to help Nick and LMPG serve you as customers or future customers. As I didn't know that. I thought he was going to ask for something. Absolutely not. We don't do that. You know? <laughs> this, is, this isn't about us. This is about helping other people and raising awareness for your, your brand and helping people I in know our that. group as well. And, and again, on behalf of LMPG, I really do need to thank you. You're welcome. You're uh, absolutely welcome. Because you've not asked for anything. No. And that's a we don't. thank you. No, we don't. Because you're, we don't want anything from you because you're providing enough back to us. Because that is exactly what your company is What I will about. do then, yes, if you join via my office, I will give you a little bit of a discount off your membership. Because that, you folks? because you haven't asked for anything. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And that's so we humble, need to, humbling. Thank for you very me. much indeed. So should we have uh, some kind of code or something like a discount code? Yeah, I, I've got I've got one in my head. Let me, let, yep. Well, should we say HMO HMO CG HMO Community Group? Let's that, go. Let's just go HMO, HMO five. HMO five. five. Folks, That'll right? be a five percent off your, you your membership. So I'll post that in the comments later. Um, HMO five, and that will give you five percent off your membership. Um, so thank you. That's a very generous offer, Nick. Thank you. Yeah, so much I've, I've just thought of that. So that's why I'm back on my back foot. Brilliant. My back foot. As I say, you know, we don't. We again, we won't get any kickbacks from this. This isn't about us. It's about you saving. So if you want to start saving, I know many of you are new in the industry. You're still doing your own developments, etc. Can I just say one other thing? Yeah. Really important is that you buying the products. Sometimes you're going to hit issues, problems. Your backstop is us. If you have an issue and you need some extra support or something goes wrong when you're ordering something, you're to ring an MPG. That's what my staff are there for. It's a complete service to support you when you're buying your product. If you don't know what product to buy, give us a phone call. Magnet have got 24 people working with LMPG wow. across the country. Yeah, massive. Plum Center's got exactly the same. He's got Jonathan, you've got the key accounts team. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got now people behind LMPG who are the experts on products. If we don't know the answer, we'll find out the person who will know the answer. Yeah. So sorry to cut no, you short there. I need to get fine. that no across. All. So folks, I think you can join me in saying thank you to Nick. He's come a long way today to join us here in our offices in Malvern. You can contact him through the website. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll speak to you again. I don't know when we're back on with Cup of Tea with Rich G in a couple of days. And Take can care. I thank you for listening as well? Thank you. Cheers, folks.